Hello guys, welcome to the Quest 3 video. All you need to know is going to be right here. I'm going to skip all of the bullshit. My impressions video, my hands-on video will be in a different video. How many times do I want to say video? It'll be in a different video on the channel if you want to hear about my opinion and my experience. But this one, I'll have tidbits of that, but it's going to just be straight facts about the device all in one place. Features, specs, games, accessories, and more. So I think that is enough chin wagging. Let's get started. So there are going to be two models available, a 512 gigabyte and a 128 gigabyte model. A big difference, and it also has a big difference in price tag. The 128 gigabyte model is going to be $500 in the States, 480 pound in the UK, 550 euros in Europe, and 74,800 yen in Japan. The 512 gig model will be $650, 620 pounds, 700 euros, and 96,800 yen. With the 128 model purchase, you will get Asgard's Wrath 2 for free. That is a full $60 game that you're going to get bundled with the purchase of the headset. And if you haven't seen that game, that is going to be an absolute must play on standalone hardware. The 512 gigabyte model though, you will get that game plus six months of Quest Plus subscription. That's going to be a total of 12 games to enjoy over that six month period. But of course, once the subscription ends, you will lose access to those games unless you keep paying for it. I hope that you're still going to be playing VR six months later though, because retention has been an issue for this. That offer is going to be available until the 24th of January next year, so plenty of time. Pre-orders for the device are open right now ever since the Kinect event, but the official launch date is going to be the 10th of October. From the 10th of October, you should be able to go into brick and mortar stores and buy it if you don't want to wait for delivery, because many times I've pre-ordered and then I'm that sat there waiting till like eight o'clock in the evening for it to turn up and I could have gone to the bloody shop and just bought it. If you can't afford to buy one outright, I know Curry's and Argos in the UK have credit options available. If you're a parent looking to buy your child one for Christmas, but it's a little bit too expensive. They are available. I'm not sure about the states. I'm sure they have credit options as well. So let's touch on the specs now. This is coming bundled with an XR2 Gen 2 chip, which has two times the graphical performance over the Quest 2 and faster load times. Any device that's saving me time from sitting there waiting is a win. I'm getting life back because of the better chip. It also comes with mixed reality full color pass through. This is achieved using two RGB cameras that enable 10 times the resolution of the Quest 2 and three times the Quest Pro. So it's achieving around 18 PPD in full color pass through. It also has a depth sensor that can automatically map out your environment, making the experience of setting the bloody thing up much more seamless. The headset is 40% thinner, but weighs 515 grams. That's 12 grams heavier than the Quest 2 and 12 grams on the street is pretty expensive. But because it's not far from the face anymore though, the pressure is greatly reduced. Its dimensions are 182 millimeters long, 160 millimeters wide and that's with the facial insert in and 98 millimeters high the new controllers will no longer have a light ring on them so you should not be smashing your remote on things because the touch controllers now are using a combination of tracking your hands and embedded leds that are built into the remote this time if you don't like the controllers the quest pro controllers provide 360 tracking and are supported with the quest 3 or just go completely hands three and just use the hand tracking feature of the device. The remotes also include true haptics. This is a feature that was in the Pro controllers and they are fantastic. It is very similar technology to the DualSense that you see in the PlayStation 5 remote. If you have not experienced this kind of haptic feedback before in VR, you are in for a treat. It is night and day for the Quest 2 feedback. The remotes also take a single AA battery that should last you a very, very long time, just like the Quest remotes previously. They just seem to last forever. And the display is going to be rocking a 2064 by 2208 resolution per eye display. It is going to be an LCD panel, but it does achieve 25 PPD with 1218 pixels per inch. It also includes pancake lenses, part of the Meta Infinite display optical stack, just like in the Quest Pro. And this achieves a 25% sharper image, which I have to say, I tried this device and it looks so 
good in that headset. My goodness, it looks crisp. And because of that, it also achieves a 15% increase in its FOV, 110 degrees horizontal and 96 degrees vertical. The display can now also hit 90 hertz like it did previously, but 120 hertz as well. We are back. The Quest Pro could not do this. I'm so happy to see that the high refresh rates are back in the Quest device. But of course, you do need a beastie PC in order to hit that frame rate. The headset is now also 40% louder with improvements to the base and its clarity, taking advantage of the 3D spatial audio. It also includes a 3.5 millimeter jack for headphones. And as I previously said, there are two storage models, a 128 gigabyte option and a 512. This device is going to have eight gigabytes of random access memory, which is less than the Pro, which had 12, but is two gigabytes more than the Quest 2. The strap on this device is also new with its design, although it hasn't changed much. Instead, it's gone for a Y shape on the top of the head to spread the load at the back of the head. Instead of just being in one spot that we see in the Quest 2 straps, it's now going to be across the back of the head, reducing a single point of pressure. It has an IPD range of 53 millimeters to 75 millimeters. That is a huge IPD range that can also be adjusted granularly now. It has a dial instead of a tiered system so you can be exact to your IPD. It now has a switch that allows you to pull the insert out so the device can be further away from your face. This is acting like a glasses spacer. So instead of putting another insert in, it is now built into the device. Great if you wear glasses. The battery life of this device is approximately two to three hours. They said 2.4 hours if you are gaming and three hours if you're using it for media. So it's about the same as the Quest 2. It will also take around two hours to charge the device to a full charge using its 18 watt adapter. The device is Wi-Fi 6E supported. So you, you currently have the best in market wireless connection to your PC if you were using a Wi-Fi 6E router. It uses a higher frequency band than Wi-Fi 6, a 6 gigahertz band, so it reduces the latency between your device and the actual data being transferred from the router and the PC. And the result of that higher frequency band and the increased bandwidth is a much better wireless PC VR experience. So from its release date, it's going to have 50 new games and over 50 Quest 3 enhanced upgrades coming before year end. I'm sure that's going to be packed with tons of mixed reality content, which I do share my impressions on in my hands-on video. If you're worried all of the games are forward compatible as well, so you can play your whole library that you had on the Quest 2 on Quest 3. And the device is using Bluetooth version 5.2. If you're buying this and you haven't enjoyed this ecosystem before, you will need a mobile device to set up the headset. You'll be using the Oculus app. No PC will be required, but you will need that device for its initial setup. You'll need to create a Meta account if you do not currently have one, and you do not have to link a Facebook account. But in some cases, you will do if you want to enjoy Facebook specific features like direct uploads to Facebook pages directly from the headset. Once you've set up, the depth sensor will map out your play space, scanning your room in 3D to understand where walls are, where are tables, chairs, which is much better than the manual drawing of that dang guardian line. But stay cautious in what you leave around the house and get mapped out inside the headset. Meta has also updated its user policy now, enabling 10 year olds and above to access this device. But if you're under 13, you will need an adult link to your account. A guardian will give access to you and restrict your content, your play times and such. You will be supervised when playing and using this device. But at least you can experience it and use the power of VR for hopefully education at that age. The headset is also going to have a ton of accessories released with it. I can't confirm the pricing of other countries at this time. I was only given the amounts in dollars, so I do apologize. So I'm going to list them all now, but they are in dollars. Just do some conversion. You'll get a rough estimate of its cost. So first is the MetaQuest 3 Elite Strap. That's going to be $70, a hard strap to increase your comfort and head support. We will have the MetaQuest 3 Elite Strap with battery. $130. This will extend your play time by around two hours because you can charge and play because of the battery at the back of the head strap and it provides increased comfort. But hopefully this one doesn't snap because that is expensive. The MetaQuest 3 silicone facial interface, $40. This is definitely going to make the experience more hygienic and the headset easier to clean. This was free for a long time with the Quest 2. $40 seems a little steep. The MetaQuest Active Straps for Touch Plus Controllers, 
$40. So this is a new accessory to the range in the Quest world. These are hand straps that are going to provide you with more confidence that you will not throw your controllers. And to me, is a great purchase if you're new to virtual reality. It made my first like six months when I first got into VR so much better knowing I wasn't launching the remote at the wall. A colored Quest 3 facial interface and head strap, $50. So this is also new to the range. This is a colorful set of inserts and straps to make your Quest your own. It comes in two colors, a blood orange or an elemental blue. There is also a Zenny collaboration for VR prescription lenses, which are $50. So if you wear glasses and you don't want to wear them in VR, you can get a prescription as lenses to put inside your headset. There is also going to be a Quest 3 charging dock for $130. This is an accessory I'm very excited for that will allow you to add rechargeable batteries to your Quest controllers so your dock can charge the headset. You see there's three pins at the bottom of the device which will be for this dock and the controllers will also charge at the same time whilst looking snug and in their place. I was going to say where it belongs but it belongs on your face. There is also the Meta Quest link cable. $80, the same one that's been around for the last four years. I cannot condone $80 for a USB-C to USB-C cable. There are alternatives that would allow you to play PC VR still through a cable. And I recommend checking those out because that's expensive. There's the MetaQuest Touch Pro controllers. As I said earlier, the Pro controllers that enable 360 tracking are available and supported on Quest 3. So if you play shooters competitively, maybe think about upgrading these because it definitely helps with pulling out weaponry from behind you or up close to the headset where you would normally lose tracking. But if you don't do that, you should be okay without them. But if you've got the money, they are better. There's also a MetaQuest 3 carry case, $70. Just crazy money for a case. But the headset is delicate. The smallest piece of damage can ruin your experience. So if you take it out on the go often, don't chuck it in your bag. Get a dedicated case and a hard one to protect it. Then finally, later on after launch, we can expect some Razer Hammerhead Hyperspeed Earbuds. What a name! Razer Hammerhead Hyperspeed Earbuds. They'll be available for the Quest 2 and the Quest 3. So I think and I hope that that is everything you guys wanted to know. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll build up an FAQ of some of the good questions in the description. My first impressions video will also be up soon. You would have seen the footage of me actually trying the device that day. So I'm going to share my thoughts on it very, very shortly and maybe a live stream for a Q&A as well. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Have a great week. Happy gaming. Whoop, whoop. That's, the, that's the hype train. Good day!